This question says when 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 2x plus 3 is divided by 2x minus 1, what is the remainder? So to find the remainder, set 2x minus 1 equal to 0. And what you're going to get is x equal a half. So you're going to plug a half into this and see what you get. You're going to find out what is f of a half. So when you plug in a half right in here, you substitute a half in here. What you get is 2 times a half cubed plus 3 times a half square minus 2 times a half plus 3, and I get 3. So the answer I get is 3, which is option A. C. Nice. All right, next question. Factorize this expression. So to factorize first a group like terms, I'm going to group my AB with my AC, and I group my 3C with my minus 3B. And you might ask, why did I group those? I see 3 in common here, and I see A in common there. Factor out the A, and you have A into B minus C times. Factor out minus 3. Factor out minus 3, I get B minus C. So what I end up getting is A minus B, A minus 3 times B minus C. Easy question. So I look for that, A minus 3, B minus C, option D, soft. Question three, which of the following graph best represent f of x being x times one minus x? Now this right here, if you were to set this equal to zero, you'll get that the roots are zero and one. So the roots are zero and one, that's the first thing. So you know A out, and you know d out. But right here, so if you expand it, you know, so what are you getting? This is x minus x square. x minus x square, that means that the coefficient of x square is negative, and so it frowns. Since it frowns, we know that it is option B. Easy, soft. It says, finding the number of visas, V of x, is issued by an embassy is given by this formula. It says the least number of visa issued in a year is, to find the least number of visas issued in a year, they're asking you for the y value at the turning point. Remember, this is a quadratic function. So we need to find the y value. So it's some quadratic like this, and this will be the least number. We need to find that y value. All right, so to find that y value, what we need to do is find k. I don't know, k is equal to 4ac minus b squared over 4a. So k is equal to 4 times a, which is 7, 4ac, and 72 minus b squared, which is minus 42 squared. And this is all going to be divided by 4 times 7. And you work out all of that in your calculator. So let's see what we get. 4 times 7 times 72 minus 42 squared divided by 28, you get 9. Option B, soft. Moving right along. It says the roots of the equation 5x squared plus 6x minus 2 equals 0. Determine the nature of the roots. To determine the nature of the roots is a discriminants formula, b squared minus 4ac. So it's going to be 6 squared minus 4 times 5 times negative 2. And you plug that in a calculator, and what you're going to get is 36 minus, this look like 20 times 2 is 40, that's 76. So since the discriminant is 76, which is greater than 0, then guess what? The roots are real and distinct. 
easy question. So, moving along. It says, find the range of values of x for which this is less than zero. So the first thing you have to do is factorize that quadratic expression to get x minus two times x minus five is less than zero. If that's the quadratic expression you have, it's always good when you just draw a little sketch. So your, your solution is here. This would be two and this would be five. And I want the portion of the graph that's less than zero. You're less than zero in here. And so that looked like option B. Nice and easy, soft. Question seven. Find the set of values of X for which three X plus two is greater than X minus two. So you have three X plus two is greater than X minus two. So first thing you can subtract X from both sides. So two X is then greater than, then subtract the two, so you get minus four. When you divide both sides by two to get X is greater than negative two. Easy question, soft. Option D. All right, next question says, if F of X is equal to three X minus four and F G of X is X, and what is g of x? Well, if f g of x equal to x, then g of x is equal to f inverse of x. Always remember that this is telling us that g of x is equal to f inverse of x. If g of x is equal to f inverse of x, you just need to find the inverse of this function. So pretty easy. So to find the inverse of this function, Remember, we start by writing f of x as y. So y equal three x minus four. Then you interchange x and y to say x equal three y minus four. You then add four to both sides, x plus four, and then you divide it by three. So x plus four divided by three, and that will give us y. That looks like option x plus four over three b. Easy question soft with a capital T. Moving along. Question nine refers to the table below. It shows the ordered pair for two functions, f and g. Find the value of g inverse of f of three. So first thing you need to do is find what is f of three. What is f of three? Well, to find what is f of three, we look when x is three, what is the functional value? When x is three, f of three equal two, all right, nice. So you can write that down. We notice that f of three is equal to two. Okay, so now that you find that f of three is equal to two, then what you need to find now is g inverse of two. g inverse of two. Finding g inverse of two really means that you need to solve g of x equal to two. So you're solving g of x equal to two. So you're finding the x value that maps to when g of x is two. g of x is two right here, and the x value is five. And so that means that g inverse of two is five. Easy question, stop. Moving right along. Which of the following below is a function? All right, clearly it's option A. Option A is a function, all right? This is known as, for when you do pure math, this is known as a modulus function, all right? This looks like y equal to modulus of x minus A. All right, this is a function. It's a function of this form, y equal to modulus of x minus A. You get more into that in unit one, but this is a function. You use a vertical line test, you notice uh, this girl right here, this X value has two Y values, so it's one too many, one too many, one too many. That's the function, easy, soft, moving right along. Question 11, the function is defined by one over X plus one, find F inverse of one. To find F inverse of one, you're solving one over x plus one equal to one. Solve one over x plus one equal to one. 
that's all you can find. If you're solving, instead of finding f inverse, what you're doing is set f of x equal one. So you're getting one is equal to x plus one. And so x equal, subtract one from both sides, x equal zero, clearly. Easy, soft, moving right along. It says simplify this expression. Three can be written as three to the first power times. 27 can be written as three cube. So it's three cube. So, and then it's times by M and the square root, the nth root is really all of this raised to the one over N. But by laws of, by laws of indices, we know that we can add the powers. And so it's really going to be three to the one plus, one plus three M. And after you have one plus three M, you're going to divide it by N. Easy question, soft with a capital T. Nice, moving right along. It says find the value of X for which four to the X plus one is equal to two. To find the value of X for which four to the X plus one is equal to two, you rewrite four as two square and four is two square and then that square is gonna be multiplied by x plus one and that is equal to two but two can be written as two to the first four two to the first four nice and so what you're ending up getting to solve now is when the bases are the same you equate the powers and i hit that by mistake oh god so that just got cancelled so let's rewrite that again so it's two times two to the x plus one. And that is equal to, why did you say that was two to the first power? Two to the first power. And so now we equate the powers and equating the powers, we get two times x plus one. And that is equal to one. So we get two x plus two equal one. And so we're getting that carry over and divide x equal minus a half. Is that correct? Yes, that looks good. Minus a half here times two is minus one plus two. Yeah, that's correct. That is minus a half. Easy question, soft. Question 14, it says, given that log p of x is six and log p of y is four, what is the value of log p of x over y? Easy question, if log p of x is six, then that means that they're telling us by definition of logarithm, then x is equal to p base to the sixth power, that is x. And then it's being divided by y, so this is x over y, but what is y equal to? y is equal to p to the fourth power. And so x over y is equal to p squared. By laws of logarithm, when we're dividing by the same base, we subtract the powers. So that means that this work, you know, to be, this is gonna work out to be the log to base p of p squared. And by laws of logarithm, we carry down the powers. So we get two times the log base p of p two times log base p of p, log base p of p is one, two times one is two. Easy question, soft, moving right along. Simplify this expression. To simplify this expression, all you're gonna need to do is rationalize. All right, so you're gonna have to rationalize. So you have root five minus one over one plus root five. And we're gonna to have to multiply it by the conjugate of the denominator, which is one minus root five. And anything we do to the denominator, we do it to the numerator. So that's why we multiply the numerator by one minus root five as well. Then we go root five times one is root five. Okay. 
root 5 times root 5 minus root 5 is minus 5 we get minus 5 minus 1 times 1 is minus 1 then minus 1 times minus root 5 is plus root 5 plus root 5 and then you're being divided by when you're dividing it's a difference of two square it's one minus root five square which is one minus root five square which is one square minus root five square by the difference of two squares and so what you're going to be getting is root five square is five one minus five is four so I'm getting minus four in the denominator, minus four. And in the numerator, what I'm getting is root five plus root five is two root five. So I'm getting two root five minus six. I can factor out two and divide, factor out two. Factor out two, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna factor out negative two Factor at negative two, I'm gonna get a half times factor at negative two, so it becomes three minus root five. So it's a half three minus root five. That's the answer. Easy sum. Nice. A half three minus root five. Easy question. Moving right along. It says simplify what is two to the minus one divided by eight to the one third. Easy question, two to the minus one is a half. So they're asking us to find out what is a half divided by eight to the one third is two. A half divided by two is a quarter. Easy, soft. It says which one of the following is not an arithmetic sequence? An arithmetic sequence must have a common difference. 2 minus 11, that's negative 9. Negative 8 minus 2 is negative 10. Minus 9, this one doesn't have a common difference. So this one, no common difference. There's no common difference in this one right here. So since there's no common difference in A, then this one is clearly not a arithmetic sequence. Easy soft question 18 find the sum of the odd integers between 10 and 50 to find the sum of the odd integers well that's no issue sum of the odd integers between 10 and 50 that would pretty much be just to write it down that's adding 11 plus 13 plus 50 plus 17 plus 19 plus all the way up to the last odd integer, which is 49. This right here is an arithmetic progression with a first term of 11, so A equal 11, and a last term, the last term is L equal 49. And the number of terms that would be in this would be 20 and N equal 20, all right? And so what we're finding is the sum of all these terms. And so the sum is n over two, which is the number of odd integers between 11 and 49, or between 10 and 50. So it's n over two, 20 over two times a plus l, which is 11 plus 49. Nice and easy, soft. So we utilize that formula and we'll get 600. It will be 10 times 60, 600. Soft. Nice. The first four terms of a convergent geometric progression is given by 500, 200, 80, 32. The sum to infinity of this GP is sum to infinity sum to infinity, you have to remember, is equal to a over one minus r, a over one minus r. Since the sum to infinity is a over one minus r, it's the first term of 500, and so it's 500 divided by 
one minus, what is the common ratio? The common ratio is 200 over 500. 2 over 5 is 0 0.4. So it's 500 minus 1 over 0 0.4. Put that in a calculator. That's 2,500 over 3. Nice and easy. So now this is a repeat question. This is a repeat from 2013. All right. And we know this answer already, option A. All right, so make sure you watch all the MCQ videos. You get used to the repeat question. That's a repeat from 2013. It says, the coordinates of the center of the circle with this equation is, the coordinates of the center, the center is one. This right here is one, one comma, this is minus three. So the same time as one, negative three. Option A, nice. Easy question, soft. All right, question 22, we know this is going to be eight, because this is a repeat question. It's another repeat question from 2013. We just put that first, it's a repeat question. which you know is eight. Easy, soft. Moving right along. Find the points of intersection with the equation x plus y equals seven and the circle x squared plus y squared equal 25. Look at this, you don't even need to do it. Four plus three equals seven, yeah? And we know that four squared is 16 plus three square is nine equal 25. Without even doing the question, we could look at it and know that the answer is three, four, and four, three. Easy, soft. Two vectors are equal if, two vectors are equal if and only if they're going in the same direction and have equal magnitude. If they are same magnitude, if they have same magnitude and same direction same magnitude and same direction, easy, so 25. Question 25 says, given that OA, given that OA is this and OB is this, find vector AB. To find vector AB, vector AB is equal to OB minus OA. It's always vector of the last minus vector of the first. So we need to work out what is OB minus OA, all oh, good. OB minus OA. Vector OB is what? Vector OB is four, five. Minus OA and OA is minus 17, 25. Nice and easy, so. And so we work this out now and what we get is four minus minus 17 is 21. And five minus minus 25, five minus 25, that's minus 20. And so that is vector AB, 21 minus 20. Easy question, so. Moving right along, question 26. The position vector of the point P relative to the origin is given by 5i plus 2j, and the position vector of Q is minus 4i plus 4j. Now I like to always sketch it to see what's going on. Makes it a lot easier for me. If you have 5i plus 2j, that means the x is five and y is two. So this would be OP right here. This is OP. That's OP. Then they tell us that Q is minus four plus 10. So Q minus four, positive 10. Minus four can put over here. And positive 10 can go somewhere up here.
And then say, what do we know about them? Clearly, the first one alone can tell us, look at this. P and Q clearly not parallel. They're not parallel. The acute angle between P and Q is 60. We don't know yet. Let's check if they're perpendicular first. They're perpendicular if their dot product is zero. So we're checking if the angle here is 90. So let's work out the dot product. So 5, 2, dot, minus 14. When you check the dot product, what you're going to get is, oh, but the, but the perpendicular, plus 5 times minus 4 is negative 20, plus 2 times 10, that becomes plus 20, and the dot product is 0. Since the dot product is 0, they are perpendicular. So they are perpendicular. P and Q are perpendicular. Easy. Soft. With a capital T. It says, find the exact value of sine 150 over cos 150. An exact value of sine 150 over cos 150. First, we need to know that the sine of 150 is equal to the sine of 30 by equivalent angles. All right, this is equal to the sine of 30. And the cos of 150, oh, I didn't even need to do it this way. Let's not do it this long way, that's too long. Let's do it the easy way. Sine over cos is tan. So this is a tan of 150, but guess what? Tan is positive only in the first. Tan is positive in the first. Tan is positive here and here. But 150 is somewhere in here. And so the answer is going to be negative. Now the tan of 150 is equivalent then to, this is then equal to negative tan 30. Negative tan 30. So put negative tan 30 in a calculator. Negative tan 30. And so that's minus one over root three. Nice and easy, soft. This question, find what is angle X. Prep school question. Angle X is 180 minus 110 plus 34, because angles in a triangle sum to 180, and that gives us 180 minus 110 plus 34, that's 36, so we'll get 36. Now that we get 36, we want the angle in terms of radians. So we're gonna divide 36 by 180. That will give us the answer in terms of radians, in terms of pi. So 36 over 180 is pi by five. That's pi by five. Easy question, soft. Moving along. Question 29, which of the following is sine 2x? Now, what do we know? We know that the sine of zero is zero. And so look at this. This is out because the sine of zero is equal to zero. But right here, when, it, when, when x is zero, you're getting one, so this one out. When x is zero, you're getting one, so this one is out. When x is zero, you're getting one. This one is out. So this has to be the answer. Easy, soft. Question 30. It says, find the smallest possible angle for which theta is between zero and two pi, and you're solving two cos theta minus one times cos theta minus two equals zero. Solving this equation, what you're ending up solving is looking at this part equals zero first, then solving that part, you're getting cos theta equal to a half. And if cos theta is equal to half, you take cos inverse to get theta equal. What cos of what give you a half? Is it the cos of 60? Yes, the cos of 60. And 60 is pi by 3. So that's the smallest value, pi by three. Easy question. So you don't need to look at this part because this has no solution. That part have no solution. 
Nice. All right, easy question. This is a repeat again from 2013. This one is a repeat. So check them out. Repeat from 2013. All right, this question says, find the value of four pi by five in degrees. So change the pi to 180. So it's just four times 180 over five. Four times 180 divided by five. And what you get is, I don't know that in my head, four times 180 divided by five is 144. Option B, nice, so. Next question, it says if sine theta is five over 13 and theta is obtuse, what is tan theta? So first it's always where you draw your triangle, obtuse meaning the angle is in the second quadrant, All right? This is it in the second quadrant. Let me just draw my triangle here. So this part, you can see obtuse, but let's just put a triangle in the second quadrant. Let's say this is theta. All right, opposite is five, hypotenuse is 13. Because they're in the negative X axis, then what that means is adjacent is negative 12. And so then the tan of theta, tan theta is opposite five over adjacent, which is negative 12. Five over negative 12, option B, soft. Question 34, this is another repeat question. It was two over sine x. This is a repeat question from 2013. Easy, so moving right along. Given that y is equal to five minus two x to the fifth, find dy by dx. So first you carry down the power of five, then you subtract one from the power to get five minus two X raised to the fourth power. And then you multiply it by the derivative inside the bracket of negative two. And so what we're getting is five times negative two is negative 10. So you get negative 10 times five minus two X to the fourth. Five times, ten, negative 10 times five minus two to the fourth. Easy question, soft, a capital T. This question says, the gradient at x equal pi by six on the curve is, find a gradient. So to find a gradient, first we differentiate y equal cos x. Differentiating it, we're gonna get dy by dx is equal to, when you differentiate cos, you get minus sine. So we get minus sine x. And then you're gonna plug in pi by six. So it's minus sine pi by six. What is the sine of pi by six is what, 30? Minus sine pi by six. That's sine 30. So this is negative a half. Easy question, soft. Moving along, it says the curve has these, this is the curve, find the values of X for which the curve is stationary. Now the curve is stationary, stationary points occur when dy by dx equals zero. That's when the curve is, that's when you get stationary points. So solve this for dy by dx, dy by dx is three X squared Carried on the power, three times two is six. So my apologies, three times two is six. So we have six X squared. Carried on this to get minus six X minus 12. And that is equal to zero. Now you can divide two by six. And so what you're solving is X squared minus X minus two is equal to zero. This makes it way easier. And then you can go ahead and factorize. Now you can go ahead and factorize this expression. 
to factorize this expression, signs are different, the greater product is negative. So you're gonna get x minus two times x plus one, x minus two times x plus one, and that's equal to zero. And so what you're gonna get then is x equal two or x equal negative one x equal 2 or x equal negative 1. Nice and easy, soft. Negative 1 and 2, soft. Moving right along. If y is equal to cos 2x, then what is dy by dx? If y is equal to cos 2x, then when you differentiate cos, you get minus sign. So dy by dx is minus sine 2x minus sine 2x, but then you multiply it by 2. So I just put the 2 right here. So minus 2 sine 2x, C. Nice. Next question. It says, given that y is x squared plus 16 over x, find the second derivative. Now let's rewrite y. y can be rewritten as x squared plus 16x to the negative one. That is y. And so to differentiate it, you get y prime is equal to, when you differentiate x squared, you get two x. Then you carry down the power, you get negative 16x to the minus two. X to the minus two. And then you differentiate it again, to get the second derivative y double prime is two carried on the power, you get plus 32 x to the minus three. What x to the minus three is what? x to the minus three is x cubed. Option B, yeah man, so we're nice. We're straight, soft. Question 40, this is a repeat question. We know this is fine. Repeat question. This is a repeat from 2013. Nice. All right, next one. Integrate this now. To integrate this now, you add one to the power, so you're gonna get two x minus four. Add one to the power, so three plus one is four. Add one to the power, then you divide by the power of four, multiply by the derivative inside the bracket of two. Four times two is eight. That looks like option C. Easy question, soft. All right, this right here says, if X is the integral from A to B of F of X, and A is between C and B, then what is X? Well, one thing we have to note is that we can then integrate from A to C, then from C to B. So we can rewrite X as say, X will be the integral from A to C plus the integral from C to B. That's all this is telling us. All right, can integrate from A to C, then plus C to B. So which one is that now? Let's see. A to C plus C to B. Here it is. Easy question. Soft. All right, it says the region R is enclosed by the x-axis and the curve and the lines x equal to 2 and 3. Find the area R. The area R is just equal to the integral of the curve from x equal to two to x equal three of x squared plus two x, x squared plus two x minus one. So we're just gonna integrate that now. And when we integrate it, what we're getting is x cubed over three plus 2x, we integrate that you get x squared minus x, and we're integrating from two to three. Easy question, soft. 
the capital T. So you go ahead and you work that out. When you plug in the three part first, this is minus. When you plug in three, three cube over three. Uh, oh God, not working as quickly. Three cube over three divided by, that's nine. Then plus three square is another nine minus three. Close that bracket. Then you're gonna subtract when you plug in two. Two cube is eight over three plus two square is four minus two. Close that bracket. You do this working out, what you're gonna get is nine plus nine minus three is 15 minus four minus two plus eight over three. That's four and two over three. This is four and two over three. And 15 minus that is 31 over three. All right, that's option B. Easy question. All right, it says that the integral from one to three of f of x is five. Then what is two times the integral from one to three of f of x plus three? So you can factor out the two and say so you're gonna get two times the integral from one to three of the function f plus three. But integral from one to two of the function f is five. So replace this with five and say so you get two times five, which is 10 plus three. 2 times 5 plus 3, which is 13. Easy question. So, the capital T. Okay. Now, final is the integral of sine x minus cos x. When you integrate sine, you get, integrate sine, you get, when you differentiate sine, you get cos. So, when you integrate cos, you get when you integrate sine, you get minus cos, so that is minus cos x. And when you integrate cos, you get sine. So it is going to get minus sine x. So it's minus cos x minus sine x. Option D. And that takes care of 2014. Easy, soft. So stay tuned for more. I hope you had as much fun as I did. All right, and all the best prepping for your exam.